But must admit the sleepless nights I've had About the boy ER is in half an hour after this Best friends Eddie Baines and Steve Donovan share the same passions, American cars, American rock and roll, and American chilies. Their dream is to work in a restaurant where they can get chilies into every dish, including the desserts. This is Sticky Fingers, the restaurant owned by former Rolling Stone Bill Wyman. It celebrates Americana, serving burgers, ribs, and pecan pie. But Steve and Eddie want to take the menu further south to chili country. They're moving into the kitchen to turn up the heat. I think me and Ed have always had the dream of running a restaurant, purely because um, we think we can do it better than anybody else. Close to the truth is that we'll have had ten pints and it'll be two o'clock in the morning and we'll be saying, Rah, we can run a restaurant. What do they know? It's, it's easy. We can do. We can do that. And we probably could for a weekend. Sticky fingers in Manchester are giving Steve and Eddie the chance to have a go in a professional kitchen to see if they can convert the public to their chili obsession. There's, there's a lot of misconception about chilies, isn't there? Yeah. The immediate problem is people hear the word chili, they they translate chili directly to heat. Yes, chilies have heat, but they also have an amazing range of aromas and flavours. The, the chilli range we are, are using will have flavours of dates, raisins, aromas of tobacco, tea, uh, dried cherries. These, Roy, are very interesting. Mm -hmm. The reason they're interesting is if you take one in each hand, yeah. you can get by with a passport rendition of um, La Cucaracha. Yeah. La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha. Steve and Eddie have created a dish of pork marinated with ginger for sticky fingers. The accompanying apple sauce starts off in a traditional way but is destined for the chili treatment. Tell me about the chili restaurant then. It wouldn't be like a Mexican restaurant. We're not aiming to sort of copy what the Mexicans do. The Mexicans do great, great food, but we're in England, so I want to take the English influences like Bramley yeah, apples. This and is probably a, a reasonable example of, 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 the, of, of the Brit mix. mix. Yeah, we thought pork and sorry. apples. Brit mix. Brit mix, yeah. rather than being Tex mix, it's okay. Brit mix. Our dream would be like not doing the cooking, obviously coming up with the ideas of the recipes. And then me and Ed would just sit in a, a little room, a tinted room above the tables. In silhouette drinking. <laughs> drinking. We, we, we see ourselves as uh, Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. <laughs> Both as Humphrey Bogart. All right, I'll be Cindy Greenstreet. <laughs> <laughs> Once the apples have softened, Eddie adds allspice, cinnamon, and rehydrated cascabel chilies. Get the combined aromas of the um, the apple, the cascabel, mm. the cinnamon, and the allspice. Yep. Mmm, uh, smells good. Smells good. When the apples and chilies have produced, they're blended and served with char grilled pork and couscous. It's an original Britmex dish. But is it mainstream enough to make it onto the restaurant menu? The most obvious thing that's going to happen is that we're going to reject everything because it's just not going to sell. Uh, my main worry is that they blow everyone's mouth out and go over the top with heat. Um, and Joe Public's going to walk in and have a mouthful of something that's going to take his tonsils out. David's fears may be well-founded. Steve is about to give an ordinary chocolate chip cake a bit of a kick. Now, this is, the, this is what obviously makes it a bit different. What is? These are uh, fresh jalapenos that have been um, sliced and marinated in bourbon overnight mm -hmm. and then they'll be going into the sponge mix. All right. Doesn't no. smell terrible, does it? Not no, much. no. The cake is baked for 40 minutes. It's cake, Jim, but not as we know it. <laughs> and decorated with fudge icing and chilies dipped in chocolate. It's not for the faint-hearted. Uh.
It's trial day. Steve and Eddie have to prepare their dishes for the head chef. Hello there. I'm Steve. Nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. I'm Eddie, good to meet you. I've got some stuff here for you to look at. I hope this is everything that you're going to want and more. Oh, it looks very familiar, this does. Great. It? What are you guys going to get out of today? The boys have to cook food for two tastings today, where David would decide which of their dishes are good enough to go onto the menu. Obviously, the tyre needs to be looked at severely, so let's get these jackets off, trousers off, and uh, one last thing, we need to get something on the head. Ah, we've ah. got hats. Lovely. After a costume change, okay, guys, the chili good? hats are replaced no. by regulation headgear. Not because of any rule, but because Steve and Eddie find them too hot to cook in. Steve is making a black bean soup, a hearty blend of beans, roast tomatoes and garlic. And for that extra something, Steve's home-brewed chilli beer. Chilies and beer, eh? A bit of chef banging around. <laughs> Ed's chili cheese fondue is the second starter which will come under scrutiny. So, what are you cooking? A black bean uh, soup. It looks disgusting, it but looks, then again... Well, I'm glad you said it. Because... <laughs> Don't forget oh, to it. <laughs> it's basically got like a whole bulb of roast, roasted garlic in. What do you think? Yes? No? Maybe? Unusual. It's got, yeah, it's got chili beer in as well. So you've got chili beer, you've got roast garlic, roast tomatoes. Black beans. You don't look convinced. <laughs> you really don't. Well, I've got the chilli, but it doesn't taste as much as from beans. There's a load of coriander going in it, and then there's like um, Wensley Dale, which is going to be broken across the top. It needs yeah. a bit of a lift, doesn't yeah, it? That. Good effort. Yeah, well, good, good effort. effort. Yeah, right. What do we got here? Chilli con queso. Basic cheese chilli fondue. Yeah, well, I'll I'll with, take um, tiny piece, you know. That's fine. <laughs> well, it's very different, I have to say. Nice it's lady. very different, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, well, you've got to taste the chilies in it, can't you? <laughs> the cheese is, um, it's good. Yeah, uh, it's yes, a good it's um... It doesn't look too good, but it tastes much better than it looks, actually. David has set a deadline for the first tasting, so the pressure's on. Three minutes, Ed. Right. The third starter is a blackened prawn salad. Ed, they're burning, aren't they? Yeah, they're meant to, that. that's how they blacken. OK, then. <laughs> they're supposed to look like a scrambled egg, is it, Ed? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, the whole idea. <laughs> so there aren't going to be many people wanting a, wanting a main course after this starter, are they? <laughs> They'll be wanting a lift home in an ambulance. So this is the refried beans. Where's the soup? No, this is the soup. That's the soup? It's a thick, thick, hearty soup. This is one of the dishes you're hoping to put on? That's one of the dishes Steve's hoping to put on. Oh, you're separate now, are you? There's a rogue, rogue tortilla there, isn't it? David has to try three chilli starters and a hot lime sorbet. First up is Ed's spiced fondue. Right, to presentation to start with. All this slop round the edge of the bowl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fine. it looks like the baby's been playing with it. Are you happy with this? Seriously? No, Eddie? not at all. No. Okay. No, it should I? Should I taste this or not? You can taste it and give me an opinion, but okay. um, it's, it hasn't come out anywhere near the consistency it should have done. As taste goes, that's not bad, but it's totally separated in any case. Yeah. I've got all little bits in my mouth. Completely agree. Yeah. So I don't think we'll be going with this one. Next one. The hearty black bean soup. <laughs> OK. I right. personally like it quite thick. Yeah. That, that is thick. And this is um, a cold soup, yeah? It was a hot soup. <laughs> <laughs> is it not? It's not hot anymore, then. I mean, guys, we've got one, one more to taste after this. We're really struggling here to get a starter on here, aren't we? I quite like the taste of that, though. You could probably thin it down a bit. If we chili. have the right texture, yeah. so first thing tomorrow morning, we need to get this cracked. Right. OK. okay. Is that a hit? Is that a ding? No, that's sort of like a lukewarm five <laughs> out of ten. OK, bearing in mind that we're going to be eating all of this, sure. what have you laid around the outside here? What I could find, it, it would have been um, flat leaf parsley, coriander. I'd like some rockets. Which we have. I'm sure you have. I, I couldn't find it. Okay. My, my fault. Just couldn't find the stuff. Right. That one's burnt. I'm just trying to think of something more wasteful than just getting hold of a box of prawns and throwing them straight in the bin. This is horrendous, guys. Absolutely horrendous. I can't taste prawn. Can you taste prawn? Only as a background, which isn't the intention. It should be at the should front. Be, we need to heighten the food. food. I've got smoke. Food. I've got too much dry powder on my palate here as well. And certainly you wouldn't eat that. Not unless you were no. a caterpillar or something. So, sorry, guys. 
Okay. Okay, what do we got here? Well, it's a melted sorbet, basically. A melted it, sorbet. The Why is that? Been, well, it's just been out here so long. Okay. I quite, I must admit, I do quite like that, though. All right. So that's two that you like, this isn't, mine. <clears throat> but this isn't, <laughs> this isn't feasible. No. In the restaurant. No. Because service, you can see what it's done in the short yeah, time. It's, it's just out on the go. side. But the soup's on, guys. Well Excellent. done. Good. Main course is to go. I'll be back shortly. Fine. Okay. Okay. Just clean up. Yeah. Get going. on. Yeah. For the second tasting, the boys get going with the hot pork and apples. And the pièce de résistance, the cake which Steve has christened Death by Chilean Chocolate. Yes. Excellent. Mr. Kipling would be proud of that one. Yes, I'm sure he would. Spirit level, Ed, spirit level. Yes. Look at that. Hey, look at the red chilies. Red and green chilies. The cake is filled and topped with the chilli fudge icing. Look at this. Ooh, look at the state of that. <laughs> I must say, it does look pretty good. You're happy with that, are you? Well, it shouldn't have been as runny as that, but I haven't got a lot of choice because we're up against it, so... Yeah, you've got um, ten minutes, guys, yeah? Right. The final touch is the chocolate-dipped chilies. Look at that. That's, ah, that's more like it. Yeah. Are these yeah. edible decorations? Well, you've got two options. People who treat them as a garnish or a decoration, fine. You've got two options. You've People got to uh, eat them and enjoy them, or hospital, surely. Yeah. But that's where the death by chilli comes in. They have had a warning. Yeah, it's, been, it's called, that's why it's called death by chilli. With only the black bean soup accepted onto the menu, Steve and Eddie need to get the chocolate cake and the pork through the next tasting. Here we are. There we are. Wow. Oh, thank you. That looks pretty spectacular. <laughs> that looks very good. First under examination is the pork. The pork is good. That apple and chilli really does work. That's got a bit of an afterburn, hasn't it? That mm, that's got an afterburner in it. A lot, it's, a lot of it. It's got these... <laughs> <laughs> that does look amazing, I have to say. It really is extraordinary. This looks amazingly homemade. But it's the chocolate cake which steals the show. <laughs> this, is, this is like nothing you could get anywhere. So that means we can put a premium price on it. <laughs> But this is very good. You've, mm. you, you've really done yourselves credit here. Mm. Yes. I think we're all suitably impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. amazed, actually. Excellent. Totally honest. What, uh, what dishes then going on? Well, I think that um, definitely from the first tasting, we had the soup on the menu, which yep. um, I think with a little bit of adjustment is going to be a success, mm -hmm. a little bit more liquid. From this, I think that um, we're all uh, unanimous in, in the pork dish. Yep. Me too. That um, yeah. apple and cascabel chutney was great. Right. Absolutely great. Very earthy, wonderful flavours. And for the dessert, drum roll, we're going to go with the chilli hat. Excellent. OK, you've managed to sneak it on. Talk to me the Caribbean music anytime. People with a little funny grin. Woogie! Take a little step aside, let me take over. Would you like to have some little sweetheart? 59, I say your time is up. 66, you look like a frozen chicken. <laughs> I'm Blanche. Have a little pineapple and grapefruit, you know. Make a great dance. There's nothing better than a little. It's the most fun me have with my clothes on. even easier to tell your best friend all about it for the 20% best friend discount on BT's friends and family. Steve, Eddie, morning. Hi. Morning. Okay, straight into it. <clears throat> Um, from yesterday, we're going to put on the black bean garlic chili ale soup. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. We're going to put the pork and ginger with a cascafel apple sauce on. Sure. Which is a great success. 
And then we've got your Death by Chilies. Right, yep. Okay. So basically, you'll be working together today to get the prep done, and then tonight you'll be splitting out. Okay, so Eddie, you'll be going on to the grill. Yeah, And fine. Steve, you'll be doing the salads, right, as yep. well as the uh, desserts. Right, yep. Okay. So off we go, guys. Right. Good day. Okay, great. Before they move into the restaurant's main kitchen for tonight's service, Steve and Eddie have to get their dishes right. Steve has roasted enough tomatoes for eight gallons of black bean soup. This is called using the wrong utensils because the, the spoon fairies have been again. <laughs> what are you looking for? A pair of tongs to help you out. There's a lot of work to do if their Britnex dishes are to be a hit. Steve and Eddie are learning to compromise. All I want to this beer in this black bean. Today, the soup has to be a lot thinner. Yeah, right, I better get some more beer. I reckon another jug and we'll be... Well, I think yeah. I want to fill it up for the top, because he wants a thin soup. Oh, see. right, OK. He doesn't want a hearty, manly soup. He wants a girly... He wants a girly... Paddy's goose-type <laughs> soup. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, he's here. <laughs> Steve, see, right. this soup is far too thick, and <laughs> neither me nor David will be pleased with this. <laughs> The cake has to be cooked flat to make service easier. The dangerous chocolate good, dipped chilies have been banned. They're on the side of caution. Yeah. This is the fudge fondue. Basically, it's um, melted chocolate and it's using um, oak smoke. Oak the cake smoke will now be chilies. served with a milder chilli and chocolate yeah, sauce. Is that sweet, it's sweet chilli? It's a sweet chilli. It's almost like a pepper, a bell pepper. Zero heat. There's no heat. That's a lovely consistency, lovely coating consistency. How did you get it like that? <laughs> Who's do we tell him? Do we tell no. him? No. That's we a trade secret. Sorry, we can't, unfortunately we can't tell you how we do it. They've right, been more concerned with getting the flavour right than okay, getting the dishes ready? finished. Service yeah. starts in an hour and they're very behind. Ready? Garnish is ready? Yeah, garnish is ready. Come on. Three hours to make a soup. Unbelievable. We've got to crumble some more cheese. We've got to crumble some more cheese. You try and crumble it nicely, yeah? Neatly. Neatly crumbled cheese. That's a new one. Oh, Wallace and Grom would be proud of this. What have you done with your container for the soup? The square container that was there for the soup, where is it? What square container? There was no square container there for the soup. You're setting me up. I'm setting you up. Yeah. That square container. Feed me up, Scotty. How are we going? Yeah, we're getting there. Do you have okay. coordination difficulties or something? Well, I'm left-handed, yeah, so it always looks bad. OK, I'd say that's a wrap, wouldn't you? Yep. Yeah, so let's just get this into the lift. All the food has to be moved from the preparation kitchen to the service kitchen for the beginning of the evening. Dave? Yeah, mate? It ain't going down. Pardon? It isn't going down. It's the button problem, OK, it? shall I...? It's not a problem. <laughs> what you need to do is shut the door. So you need to go down to get it out. Right, okay. OK. Can you open the, uh, the shutter? Is it the same way as you close it? Right, Teresa, can you call the waiting staff and let them know the soup's now changing? During service, Steve and Eddie will cook sticky fingers dishes as well as their own. Steve's on soup, salads and sweets, and Eddie's on the grill. OK. This is very, very hot, OK? Yeah, yeah. One and a half minutes each side. Keep it moving. The boys are taught how each dish should look and they have to stick to it. That's wonderful. Yep, we're going something like that. The black yeah. bean soup right, has to be the same every time. Sorry. OK. This right. thing comes across to the middle section. Yep, Wait right. till long. OK, you're happy with that, yeah? Excellent, yeah. Have a look at this. What should we finish oh. that with? A little bit of green? Cori coriander. A bit of coriander? Yeah. There you go. Are you pleased right with there. that? Just Sorry, yeah, yeah, excellent. That. OK, up on the plate, that's it. Good. Fine. Fine. Even Ed's pork has to have a certain look. Just check out the grill marks on there. Yeah? We're trying to get some stars on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Next time, just get a little bit more impression with your tongs on the top. Will do. Now, tonight, as you know, we have a special menu on, and Eddie and Steve are going to run through exactly what is it goes in each dish. Before service begins, there's a briefing where the waiting staff get to hear about the new chilli dishes and are encouraged to sell them. Good. Tonight, this is something that we don't normally do on our menu with hot chilies, guys, so it's going to be a real test of how good you are. And don't forget, you are the best. So prove it to me tonight. We're going to have a little bit of a, this is something we do quite often, we're going to have a little energising circle where we all hold hands. Oh, I like it. Yeah? I like that idea. We all hold hands, OK? This is the energy that is going to get us through this evening. We're going to be a winning team, OK? Let's make the best shift we've ever had, OK? okay. Go for it, guys. All right. Cheers. Steve and Eddie's chilli plans don't stop at the menu. 
They've created chili cocktails and salsa dips for the bar and set about bringing a taste of old Mexico to the decor. Welcome to our special chili night. We have a special Chilean menu tonight produced by Steve and Eddie in the kitchen. Give them a wave. And we also have the fantastic Latin American band playing tropical Latin American music. Could you give it up, please, for Otra Vez? Service is underway, and with 600 customers to feed, speed is of the essence. This one here? We, we use the this kind of pan. As soon as these come on, we're looking at rushing these out because we've only got six minutes to get the appetizers out of the tables. Right. So think about that time frame. As soon as that order gets called into the kitchen, chicken goes down on the grill, we start cooking it immediately. You've got plates here ready to rock and roll, yeah? Yep. As soon as you get the order on, you get that salad made up and ready. You make sure that the middle person knows all about that. OK, so Teresa needs to hear the shout. What I want to say is ready. Yeah, ready. All right. They're ready. Eddie quickly gets the hang of things, but Steve is off to a slow start. Let's do a dessert. Do, do me a dessert now. I don't know where they're, where they're for the chocolate cake. We've been through this twice, three times. It's one special dessert. You know where it is? I don't know where the chocolate cake is. You don't know where it is? No. Uh, go and have a look out the back there. Get this. Come on. It's out the back. Eddie, how long have you got that for, please? About 10 seconds. Steve's already done half a dozen salads, but he still needs help every single time. Yeah. Done in your bowl, nice and neatly. What, in the middle? In the, in the middle of your bowl, yeah. Like this. Then we want one garlic crouton on the top. One? Yep. Cross Probably on the top. Finish. On the top. Parsley. Cut your anchovy in half and cross it across the top of the um, crouton. That wasn't bad. That was about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Let's try and get it down to two minutes, yeah? It isn't just Steve's speed which is a problem, but how the boys' dishes are selling. How are you doing? Oh, Roy, how are you? All right, what's selling? Everything is selling. Everything? Right? Seriously? Burgers are going well at the moment. Yeah. The uh, chicken starters, very popular. Ed is right. Everything is selling except for their brick mix dishes. Halfway through the evening, they've sold only two pork, three soup, and five chili chocolate cake. Are our dishes out serving yours at the present moment in time? Uh, no, I've actually done more of my dishes. You think so? Sure? Yeah, but no one's got any taste in Manchester. So they, so they, oh! they have ultimate taste in Manchester. Ed is now completely at home in the kitchen and is handling his meat like an old pro. But Steve's still lost in salads and sweets. What have we missed? The, 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 uh, yes, good point, yes, Let's good point. Let's have a standard here. Yes. Graham, cut the lettuce down in those sandwiches. Yeah? We've got half bloody iceberg lettuce in these now. Customer's just about to walk out. Come on. No, yeah, no, no, stop him, stop him. Take the 31. Get the docket with the top. Where's the docket? Docket, docket. Is it down there? I'm just testing him, there's no docket. Steve's speed never really picks up, and neither do their sales. By the end of the evening, they've only sold four pork, ten soup, and 14 portions of chocolate cake. Unfortunately, they only managed to reach 5% sales on the whole menu, um, and that was really helped by the death by chili and chocolate. Uh, the other two came in miserably uh, last on the sales list. Individual performances, how did they do? During service, Steve was, he was a little bit lost. He was a bit wandering around. We had to almost put a lead on him to sort of chain him to his section. What do we do? Ed at the back just sweated away and toiled away. And you, you could see his brow was furrowed through three quarters of the service. He was concentrating so hard. I felt one of the guys at about 9.30, because that's when I got chef's arse. <laughs> Dave tells me that uh, <laughs> perspiration <laughs> follows its natural path and uh, <laughs> a bit of chef's arse. Would you consider putting any of these dishes on your menu as a regular item? The only thing that I'd consider putting on, Roy, would be the uh, dessert. The chef said he might actually want to try and keep the death by chilies on the really? menu. Really? Yeah. Excellent. Said so mm. he'd give it a go. Oh, good. I didn't realise the chef was quite that stupid. I think. <laughs> <laughs> would you give him a job? I wouldn't go as far as that. So your advice would be stay enthusiastic amateurs? Yes, don't give up the day job. 
Next week, we'll see how this amateur chef gets on when he adds a little sparkle to his local carvery. <laughs> Chef for a Night is back at the same time, 8.30 next Wednesday. Chris Evans takes on Pebble Beach, Bob Monkhouse on quizzes, and quiz show starring Rick Fiennes. Paul offer you all this money to be on some reaped quiz show. Instant fame, the world. Would you do it? I'll have to hire you. Ah, pass. The answer, game for a quiz. Saturday from 8 on 4. Everyone ready for this? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, this is so exciting. It's the king of Friday night. You got a message for the viewers for the weekend? Have a great one. Now, go on. <laughs> Texans aren't prepared for this kind of nightmare, sir. We gotta work fast. We've gotta stop that show from going out. Just simply pop them on and you won't hear a thing. Join Johnny Boy Revel and his wheels of steel Friday night on four. Tempers flare up in ER in half an hour here on four after Chef for a Night.